Praise his holy name. Family of believers. Ah, family of believers. Wear your mask. Praise God. Use some sanitizer and keep your distance. Praise be to God. We are hearing so many things about the pandemic here and how it's on a rise everywhere around the world. Uh, we're hearing all kinds of different reports. My question to you today is, whose report will you believe? I have a different report, hallelujah, that comes from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, directed, hallelujah, in my heart and my spirit by the Holy Spirit. And we just want to share with you. So we pray that you get out your Bibles or your phone, call some folk, you know, invite them to listen in. Praise be to God. I only have about 30 minutes, if that. So we just want you to come. You have to go back and read and study. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where there's no shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Father God, it's in you we live, it's in you we move, and it's in you we have our being. We thank you for another day of peace, another day of victory. In the storm, we know there's many storms are raging, but Father God, you give us peace in the middle of the storm. So Lord, we love you for an opportunity to just share your word, hallelujah, to dying men and women, Father God, that they might be resurrected from darkness and fear and confusion. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Once again, we thank God for you. And we want to let you know that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So we just pray that the gospel, which is the good news, it trumps everything else you hear. It overrides the confusion. It overrides the fear. It doesn't remove the confusion and fear, but it gives us an out. It gives us a, a trust that goes beyond what we see, feel, touch, taste, our five senses, smell, hear, because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight, and the just, the just, those who are justified, just as if we didn't sin, hallelujah, because of the blood of Jesus, praise be to God, we are uh, uh, walking in freedom, hallelujah, freedom from fear, freedom from doubt, freedom from confusion, freedom from hate. I want you to open up your Bibles. Praise be to God. I love this Bible. It's uh, uh, Warfare, Spiritual Warfare and a Financial by, by Mark Sorello. And I, I had it for years and I've been reading out of it. And uh, it's just a blessing. It has been a blessing over the years. And during the challenges people are facing, uh, I lost a lot of friends. I shouldn't say lost. They've gone on. Uh, pastors and bishops are friends. Uh, funeral after funeral. I've done a number of funerals, including family members. Praise be to God. So it's been a it's been a challenging time for everybody, even for me. We sit here and we say, oh, we're just strong. We got it. We know. No, faith doesn't come by what you heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So you have to keep your heart, your spirit, man, tuned to what God is saying. And you have to be consistent in your hearing, amen, because Satan is consistent in bringing you confusion and fear and doubt. Praise be to God. And because of, hallelujah, uh, Adam and Eve's high treason, the word of God says, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Because of Adam and Eve's high treason, we were now plunged into darkness, into death. But because of one man's sin, hallelujah, death entered in, but one man's righteousness, his death, burial, resurrection, Jesus Christ, we now have peace and victory in the name of Jesus. We're going to start off reading in Corinthians. Praise be to God. Corinthians uh, chapter 1. Praise be to God. And I, I want you to read along with me. And I pray that you would go back and meditate on God's word and study God's word. Uh, chapter 1 of uh, the second epistle of Paul to the apostles at Corinthians. It starts off by saying, Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your word. We'll not return to you, boy, but it, we, it will accomplish everything you sent it forth. And people will go back and study and the family will go back and read it. And we will be strengthened and encouraged to go and be ambassadors for the kingdom of God in Jesus name. Amen. If you're not saved, Romans 10 and 9 says that thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that he died and rose from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Just say, just invite him into your heart. It's so simple. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose from the dead. 
And right now, by faith, I'm trusting and believing that I am saved in Jesus' name. What a mighty God we serve. Paul says here, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And Timothy, our brethren, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. God, grace be to you and peace. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay with me. Verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, and the God of all comfort. So you're looking in the wrong places for comfort and peace and victory and healing. It's all in Christ. It's all in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. Who, look what he says. Who comforts. We're looking for comfort. This scripture, this verse of scripture is for such a time as this. God knew we would be living through the pandemic. God knew that we would be struggling in so many ways. But listen to what it says in verse 3. It says, blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the Father of circles work. All comfort. You're looking for comfort in the wrong places. You're looking for comfort in the wrong it, Listen, a God of all comfort. Look at verse 4. Who comforteth us in all. There you go again. Close it. As you close it, there you go again. Who comforts us in what? Here you go again. All our tribulations. What, what are you dealing with today? Oh, come on. You know, so many people are hurting. So many people are struggling. So many people are mad at God and mad at the world and want to know why and how things are. How did things get this way? And, and, and it's one question after another. Well, it's amazing that God gives us the answer even before the question. He gives us the answer even before all the challenges and all the things that we have. Satan is a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ has always come. He sent his son that we might have that Christ, the Father, Son, the Son, Jesus Christ, to come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Now you say, wait in the sweet by and by. Yes, in the sweet by and by, but here as well. He's telling us that with all the challenges that we face, the God of all comfort is still in the midst. He's still present. Praise be to God. Listen to this. I'll read it again. You just can't shoot by this scripture. And I want you to go back and read it. Praise be to God. Because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. There's going to be some powerful word going forth today. Pastors are going to teach. And it's going to be a blessing evangelist. Hallelujah. Prophets. Hallelujah. I mean, the word is going forth mighty to the day. But if you don't go back and study, if you don't go back and read, if you don't go back and meditate on it, I've been saying it all my life, this book of the Lord should not be taught out of thy mouth, but thou should meditate on it day and night and observe to do all according that is written there. And he says, and then thou shall make thy, thy way prosperous, and then thou shall have good success. So when we read God's word, we find out that God is the answer. God has given us the answer through his son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, who, verse 4 says, who comforteth us, and underline this circle is, do what you have to do, color it in, whatever, put it on your, uh, your, on your uh, refrigerator, praise. Listen, it says, uh, put it in your car as you're walking uh, and going, driving. Everywhere you can post this, post this now. Hallelujah, because if you're not struggling, there's some people around you that's struggling, there's some people that's hurting bad right now and, and don't know, they just don't, they, they're not, they, they don't, they have not received any comfort from what the doctor has said, they haven't received any comfort from their cousins, their uncle, we, I, I, every funeral I have, there's very little comfort we give the word of God, and you know what the last thing uh, uh, the word of God says, uh, you know, is to comfort one another with these sayings. Hallelujah. Comfort, it says in the scriptures, comfort one another with these sayings. That's the last part of the scripture that I read at, at, at a funeral. But but people still are, are, are hurting. And, and it's, what do you say? You go to the word. We don't have enough, we don't have our vocabulary and what we have learned, what we are taught, we are taught outside of the word of God is not enough. I don't care if you, uh, thank God for psychiatrists and psychologists. I don't know what, what their teachings are. I've taken psychology and things of that nature. 
But I know compared to what I've read and studied and people I know, I know a couple of doctor friends, it doesn't compare. It doesn't compare to what God has given us. Praise be to God. It, it, what, 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 one of the things he's given us is power. He's given us love. And watch this. He's given us a sound mind. Those three combinations, my goodness, of power. We have the dunamis power of God by the power of the Holy Ghost. Of love. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in the name should not perish. And a sound mind. We have a sound mind. When everything is falling apart, the world seems to be upside down. Fear, confusion, doubt, panic in the finances. Panic with our children, our loved ones. Panic over the things that when we go to work, we have to wear masks now. We have to cover our faces. And people saying, ah, oh, you don't have to do that. Hey, you don't have to do anything. But praise be to God, the devil is not telling you to put that mask on. The devil would never tell you to put your mask on, sanitize right? Let's get back to the word of God. It says, who comforteth us in all our tribulations. Hallelujah. So the next time, which it might even be now. You've been struggling right now. You've been waiting to hear some good news. This is the good news. He comforts us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the what? Comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of who? Of our education, of our finances. Listen, the things of this world are temporal. The things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. The Bible says, set your affections on things which are above and not beneath. If you're going to have comfort, it cannot be in your medicine. It cannot be in your car. It cannot be in your house. It cannot be in the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches. You say, why do you say medicine? Because people are getting comfort. Or they think they're getting comfort out of taking medicine and prescriptions. You're not. And I'm not saying don't take your prescription if the doctor, hallelujah, subscribe it to you, prescribe it to you. But you need to be thanking God for your healing. He comforts us in the sickness. He, and listen, who comforts us in all our tribulations. What tribulations are you dealing with right now? It's too numerous for me to say a name, one or two, that you might be dealing with. It says, verse 4, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort, the same comfort that God has comforted you with. It says, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted. How? of God, not of our things, not of our family, not of our friends, of oh, God. But then it says, now as you receive this comfort, you ought to comfort somebody else. Your little selfish thing, it's all about in the world, it's all about me, 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 I gotta have my family, my more, my poor, no more, not in the word of God. It's God's will that none should perish. God's so the word, he gives only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We are ambassadors to go and preach the gospel. It says, it says, hallelujah, who comforts us in all our tribulation. That sounds good, isn't it? Hallelujah. You come out. No, it's not enough. Why did he do it? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Who's in trouble right now? Call somebody up right now and find out if they're in trouble. Somebody's in trouble right now in many ways. In many ways, Dad, you, you could be in trouble in a lot of ways. Somebody is in trouble right now. You were in trouble. And even if you think you were, and even if you think you had it going on, listen, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. We have to stand before the kingdom, of, before the king, and we have to give an account for every idle word we said, every idle deed we've done, everything that we've done. we got to stand and give an account for it. The good news is today you could be set free. You don't have to uh, wallow in, in your discomfort. Praise be to God. I, I, I know you lost a loved one. I, I know you're struggling with some sickness and some pain. Hallelujah. But there's nothing like peace. There's a time I remember when I got sick. I was so sick as a young boy. And I didn't care about food, people. I just didn't care about anything. I was like ready to go on to a P 
peaceful place if it meant death. I didn't understand it all, but I, 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 I had gotten so sick in my lifetime, and, and it was just, it was just unbearable. And I know that there is possibly somebody that's feeling the same way. I know that there's somebody that's torn and mad at God. And God, why? And God, God is talking to you now. Sisters and brothers, young and old, the young folks, listen, the young folks have enough sense to understand this as well. Don't, don't think, don't get it twisted that young people are not hearing the sin. And, no, and, I, and I'm listening and I see now the world is going into a darker place. Things that you would not ever hear on TV, television, whatever you call it, or they don't even use it. Your phone now, the cell phone, social media, it's just terrible. You say, Bishop, don't get on me, young. I, listen, somebody ought to warn them that Jesus Christ is soon to come and none but the righteous shall see God. He says that we ought to be in right standing with him. How do we get in right standing? By believing on Jesus. Romans 10 and 9, that thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that he died, he rose from the dead. These people don't believe that. He's our risen savior. He's soon to come. But as he comes back, he's coming back with judgment. Are you ready to meet the king? Soon and very soon we are going to meet the king. So this comfort that I am talking about is entangled with the resurrection. It's based on death, but it's also based on life, eternal life. Praise be to God. I, I, I can't get past verse 3 and 4. It says, blessed be God. We're in first Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 1. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, thank God, and the Father of all comfort. Verse 4, who comforteth us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Let me tell you something else. Curveball. There are people who are doing just fine. I'm telling you, I see both sides. There are people who are living good. In the, in, the, in, the, in the pandemic, people are actually going about their business and they're thinking they're all right. They have their car. They have their money. They have their food. And praise be to God. I mean, that, that, I, that, that's not a problem for me. And the problem is, and it's not for me, but it's for them, is that you better know Jesus. I've been in too many uh, settlements with people dying and leaving everything behind. And you should see huh, the, fi the fights that the family have over those things, which nobody's going to take in the grave. And the other day I was looking at something on, and they were taking stuff out of the grave. I forgot where it was in Africa somewhere in Egypt, and they were going and digging out those tombs, taking stuff out. The question is, where will you spend eternity? It's not going to be in that grave. Thus thou art, thus thou art to become. But at the sound of the trumpet, the dead in Christ shall rise, and we that remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Isn't that good news? So don't think, Mr. Big Star, because you think you've got it going on and it looks okay and you got your health, you got your strength, and you have favor with God. That does not mean you will have favor with God. There's some people don't have anything to have more favor uh, with God that you could imagine, that you can even imagine. They don't have all the materialistic things. There's some tragedies going on in their hearts and in their lives, but they have favor with God. That's what you need to have faith with God. How do you have faith with God? You have to have faith with God and favor with man. You just can't say God is all mine. No, God, just look what he just said. Look what he just said. It's not enough for you to have faith with God. It says, who comfort all us all in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted. Where is black and white in here? Where is it about the white man, all oh, lives, uh, 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 black lives matter, and this one don't matter, and all lives matter?
God loved the world. Don't, 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 don't cheapen God with saying just black lives. God knows black lives. Why? He made us who we are. We are beautiful. We are, the Bible says about us, we are fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous in his sight. Black and white. He didn't say all black. He didn't say all lives matter, all loves. Uh, black lives matter. People matter. Just, just God love. God's love supersedes any titles we want to put on our our challenges and our destiny and our uh, uh, life and our lifestyle. God has already uh, branded it, and, and we stand on this promise. Look at verse five, because I'm out of town. This from it says verse five. For as the suffering of Christ abounded in us. So our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Huh? Verse 6. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectually in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted it is for your consolation and salvation. Look at verse 7. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also, praise be to God, of the consolation. You, you partakers of the suffering, it says, so shall you be partakers also of the consolation. There's some people who will never receive the consolation if they do not turn their attention towards God. There's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. People don't like to talk about hell, but the Bible says none but the righteous shall see God. And, and, and if you lift up your eyes in hell, if you're not in Christ, the Bible says in hell will you lift your eyes. You do not want to spend eternity in hell. And somebody said, well, you don't know I'm living in hell now. No, the Bible describes what hell is like and how it is to be. And the question becomes, I said, the brother, we be comforted. It is for your consolation and salvation. And verse 7 says, and I hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also be, hallelujah, also be, be also of the consolation. Verse 8 says, for we would not, brethren, talking to the believer, are you a believer? Talking to the believer. And there were some believers who gone astray. Now, there's some believers who say, well, I'm a believer. Where are you headed? Where are you going? Oh, yes, you're a believer. There were believers who turned or went their ways and not the ways of God. But they were believers. It says, we, hallelujah, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. Hey, listen at this. Listen at this. Watch this. That we were, hallelujah, pressed. Nobody liked being pressed. Watch this. He said we were pressed out of measure. Oh, come on, Bishop. You just finished talking about peace and consolation. Stay with me. Above strength, in so much that we despised even our lives. Man, I, I can stay here all day, but my time. Look at verse 8. You go back and read it. This, isn't, this doesn't stop when I say time. I got 30 minutes. I'm just reading this to you because you're going to go back and study. You're going to pray. I don't care who tell you what. You're going to pray and see God's face. And you're going to ask God, what are you saying to me? Speak to me, Holy Spirit. Speak to me. Praise be to God. And he's going to tell you things I can't even begin to tell you. Look, it says, verse 8, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which come to us in Asia. People say, uh, believers, uh, believers don't get uh, struggle. They don't have problems. They just live in peace and harmony and victory. Not so. And it's going to get even tighter. Watch this. That we were, pre we were pressed out of measure. We were above strength in so much that we despise even our lives. Do I need to, that self despise even your life? You're in that much agony and pain and hurt and challenge? Hallelujah. It says this. Look at this. Verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. 
Stay with me. That we should not trust in ourselves. But in who? God, which raises the dead. That's why we put all our trust in him. You're trusting in your money. You're trusting in your health. You're trusting in your ability to articulate the king's English. You trust in your uh, look or your job. Where are you putting all your trust? My God, hallelujah, where are you putting your trust? It says in verse 9, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death. Watch this. And doeth deliver. He shall deliver and doeth deliver. Who delivered us from so great a death? Who delivered us from so great a death? Hallelujah. And doeth deliver. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. So let's put these three together. Let's put these two together. Verse 9. Hallelujah. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Now, it don't stop in verses. It says, who delivered us from so great a death and doeth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I close out, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God has promised victory in every circumstance. God has, I want you to know that before we leave out, God has promised victory in every circumstance. Let me read this to you. I only have three more minutes and I'm going to close. I'm not going to be able to explain it, but I'm just going to read it to you. I explained enough. Now the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. God has promised victory in every circumstance. Make no mistake about it. Satan is out to destroy. He will create havoc in the circumstances in your life. He will bring affliction. He will bring diseases upon your body, attacking your children and your loved ones, causing strife in your marriage, binding your finances, creating problems on your job. Anybody, is this familiar with anybody? Praise be to God. He will grab hold of your mind in a vice-like grip through fear, worry, and doubt and try to keep your mind in constant state of turmoil. Using your circumstances, Satan will try to wear you down physically, mentally, and spiritually until you are in so, hallelujah, weary, so discouraged, so depressed that you are ready to throw your hands up in defeat, to too tired to fight or resist his attack. Anybody there yet? Some of you are there right now, but I got good news for you. All the things that I read to you, praise be to God, you are caught in a, a vicious cycle that uh, paralyzes and hinders you from releasing your faith and walking in the victory God has provided for you. Even though Satan's strategy is to use your circumstances to defeat you, there is no weapon, no strategy that Satan can devise and use against you that is powerful enough to defeat you. No, not one. God has planned, hallelujah, and provided for us to have complete and lasting victory. Now, during our greatest trials, even in the very face of death, he has not, hallelujah, promised that we would never know pain or sickness never face persecution or suffering, hallelujah, or suffer a hardship. On the contrary, as I close, we know that all that will live in godly, hallelujah, in Christ, all that will live godly in Christ, all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. Go look this up, 2 Timothy 3 and 12, hallelujah. 
2 Timothy 3 and 12, know that all that will live in Christ. Look, Jesus said, in the world, you shall have tribulations, John 16 and 33. So we know that our faith will be tested and tried. But praise be to God, as we close, hallelujah, anybody has never given a heart over Jesus Christ, we pray that you will do it. We're going to give you the address, how to get in touch with us, and we pray that you would get in touch, tell us how you're doing. We're doing a great thing in social media. We need you. We want you to be a part of it. If you're not affiliated with any church, we want you to help us out, get involved with Jesus Saves Ministry, and we'll give you this information after this last promise. But he, hallelujah, promised us, God promised us in victory, praise God, in every circumstance we face. The Apostle Paul faced circumstances that we were beyond his strength to endure even to the point of despairing for his own life. But all the things that we read, we thank God for this teaching, and we thank God that Marshall has given us some great notes. Praise be to God. I heard him as a child, but you need to go back and read and pray because the teacher is the Holy Spirit, and he wants to speak to your heart in the name of Jesus. Invite him into your heart if you have never given your life over to Jesus, and we'll tell you where we locate right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for joining us today during this time of having virtual church. Yes, we said virtual church. You can reach us at www.stg-ct.org. If you would like to give, you can cash app us at JSMCT88. Or if you would like to give via PayPal, you can go to our website. We also thank those who have been subscribing to our YouTube channel, which is under Shane Gaskins. So we ask you to share this video with your friends, with your family, those who are hurting, those who are depressed, and there might be some who aren't, but they don't know who Jesus is. So we ask you to share this video with them. Once again, we thank you for joining us at Jesus Saves Ministries Virtual Church. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. No man can come unto the Father but by him. God bless you.